Hey everybody, this is my review and testing of a first run Intermountain ES44DC. This is one of the uh, first run models that was released in December of 2011. So we'll do a 360 overview and just have a look at some of the detail. We'll put it on the scale, weigh it, we'll use the jar bar push-pull meter to measure its uh, pull and push capabilities and then I'll just quickly show you the lighting and sound. So let's get started. So let's uh, get closer here and you guys can be the judges of the detail on this unit. Very nice looking unit. Got some printing on the pilot. Intermountain does note that it is equipped with KD couplers. Lots of little warning stickers and decals all over the place on this thing. You can see the motor leads there. See the yellow wire? And you can see it on the front truck as well. Nice tooling detail there on the pilot. I don't have to point out every nut and bolt. You can tell this is a really well tooled model. Got warning stickers on the on the roof panels there. Very nice. And around did a very good job. Okay, so let's uh, put it on the scale and see what this thing weighs in at. Call that 504 grams. So we'll fire this thing up and hook it up to my digital push pull meter. We'll see what its draw bar push and pull is. We got 80 there. Let's do another one. Eighty. And we'll do it one more time. And eighty. So it's pretty pretty solid. Pulling, you can get eighty grams with that thing. So let's flip it around and do a push test. Okay, we'll run the push test. Seventy. Seventy. And we'll call that one 75. So that gives us an average of 71.6 grams draw bar push capability. So let's go back down to track level and have a look at the lighting on this unit. So we're up in my office, I'd call this a normally lit room, but let's just take a look at some of the lighting features. F5 is the number boards. 
Not too bad, not bright like the 40-2Ws. This, these are nice. A little bit of bleed through there underneath, but I mean, typically you don't look at them from that angle. So, up from the top, that's pretty good. All right, so that's function five. Function six is the DPU lights. He has 44 DC has this in it. Just telling you about the red marker lights for function six and also the flashing ditch lights if you reset the decoder. So we've got the DPU red rear lights in function six and the locomotive needs to be in reverse for those to come on. These are pretty cool. They look a little brighter on my camera than they actually are. They're more of a dark red the way I'm seeing them right now. There is some bleed through there in the cab. That kind of sucks. I don't know why they're showing up so bright, like they look almost pink to me in this video, but they're actually more of a, a very dark red, like a stoplight. And the last function we've got on the front end for lighting is the headlights and ditch lights. So they come on together with function zero. Me personally, I don't mind not having the ditch lights separate. It's uh, it's a sacrifice they made because of the uh, DPU lights being on function 6. So The lights are really good on this thing. We have a little bit of bleed through in the bottom of the cab. But like I said, that's only if you're viewing at a track level. If you're looking at it like we normally would see this. Okay, we'll flip it around and have a look at the lighting on the rear end of the unit. So just the same as the front, we've got DPU lights on the rear. Very cool feature. I think this is awesome. Again, they're showing up kind of more of a bright light red, but they are more dark red like a stoplight in, in real life. I don't know why it's taping it like that. And the locomotive needs to be in forward for these to come on like this. So that's our rear DPU lights, and then we've got the rear lighting ditch lights and a headlight which is very cool that they put ditch lights on the rear of this unit very well done on the lighting end okay guys so let's talk about sound on these ES44 DC's best thing Intermountain did was just let Tsunami by soundtracks just you know do what they do best and put an awesome sound decoder in it. Right out of the box it's not perfect and this is my opinion but I always think that they have the prime mover too loud so when it gets into you know notch 6, 7 and 8 you can't really hear anything else besides that screaming engine so I like to turn it down a bit. That's the advantage of having a soundtrack tsunami decoder. You can go in there, change the CVs, you can adjust sound levels, you can adjust the equalizer and you can add reverb. So you can really go in there and totally customize it to what your preferences are. So I'm not going to go through it and show all the different sounds. By now I'm sure there's a, you know, a hundred videos or more on YouTube of different, you know, people just showing off the sounds on these things. So if you do want to see a video of it running, just go back in my older videos. There's one where it's pulling a caboose around and it, it pretty much has all this different sounds. So overall sound is very good because it has a soundtrack tsunami decoder and a decent sized speaker uh, in, the, in the radiator section. Okay guys, so that wraps up my review. Fender Mountain's first run General Electric ES44 DC. Overall I give this unit an 8 out of 10. Obviously this thing has awesome lighting and sound. The detail's great. It runs really well. Nice slow, uh, has a really slow speed that it's capable of. The only thing is it's just a little bit light on the light side and that affects its pushing and pulling. So. so I hope you enjoyed this review and test and as always thanks a lot for watching.